Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and today we're talking car stereo wiring harnesses. In this video, we're going to show you where and why these harnesses are used, on the harnesses themselves, what the colors actually mean, and we're going to show you exactly how to get one wired up yourself. Provo Beats Audio Installation Channel is sponsored by NVX and Sonic Electronics. Get 10% off all speakers, amplifiers, wiring kits, and more with coupon code PBAI at NVX. Also get 5% off all car audio components at Sonic Electronics with coupon code PROVOBEAST. Aftermarket manufacturers have made it easier and easier for us to install our favorite aftermarket units into our own personal vehicles. Now these aftermarket manufacturers have created these wiring harness adapters that essentially plug into the factory harness that plugs into the factory radio. When that radio has been removed, you're left with the plug. Now each year make and model of car will differ on the style of plug that you'll see here, but in general, these wiring harness adapters that we can pick up from these manufacturers essentially here will plug directly into that factory plug. And these ends here will then be wired to your chosen radio. Now each year make, model, and trim level of a car will differ and can differ pretty significantly depending on what it requires to make an aftermarket radio work. We have simple harnesses like these ones that just essentially plug and play into the system. We have more complex ones that require a um, a smart harness, essentially a little brain here to convert certain signals that the car is putting out to one that an aftermarket radio can read to a premium setup where these, these kits here, for example, through iDatalink will allow you to pull not only radio type signals from the car, but also pull in car data such as tire pressure, HVAC controls, etc. So to identify what you need for your install, online retailers such as Sonic Electronics, our sponsor, will have a vehicle fit guide where you can enter your year make and model and it will determine the right harness needed for the job. You can also go directly to the manufacturer's website like Metro Online, Skosh, um, Pack, as well as iDatalink. They all have similar fit guides that will tell you, based on their own products that they manufacture, what will fit for your vehicle. Now each aftermarket radio will also come with its own wiring harness. These harnesses have very similar colors that will marry up to the chosen aftermarket wiring harness adapter. Once you marry those up, essentially this will plug into your car and then this will plug into the actual radio itself. Some harnesses are required to retain certain factory features for example, an amplifier and for example, this Toyota harness fits certain Toyotas that allow you to retain the factory amplifier while installing an aftermarket radio. These essentially would plug into the pre-outs or RCA outputs on the back of the aftermarket radio supplying that factory amplifier the signal needed to operate. All right, so diving into the harness specifically, most wiring harnesses, fortunately for us here in the industry, match the same color code. Now on occasion, um, some manufacturers will switch up a wire or two with their color, so always consult with your harness instructions before you get started. Yellow is your constant 12 volt, or sometimes called your memory wire. Black is your ground. And then red is your accessory or sometimes called your ignition wire, which essentially boots up the radio when the key is turned on. Orange can be either a dimmer or an illumination wire depending on the radio itself, where if you turn on your headlights, it will dim the radio to make it a little bit more darker so the screen's not so bright um, in the evening. Now for your speaker wiring colors, generally speaking, you're gonna have four sets of colors. In each pair, you'll notice there's also one with a black stripe in each pair. The black stripe indicates negative and the wire without the stripe is a positive. Now, there may be other colors in the harness that we didn't mention, such as a really light green, which occasionally can be a parking brake wire. A purple white on some radios indicate a reverse gear wire. Sometimes a yellow black can indicate a mute wire. A blue yellow on certain models will indicate a steering wheel control wire. And finally, there may be other colors 
on the wiring harness specifically that we didn't go over. So like I said, always consult the manual before you get started. Now, in order to connect your aftermarket radio harness and the harness adapter that you picked up specifically for your car, matching up color for color, there's different ways to actually connect the wires together. Here on the bench, we have a couple of variations here. We have two styles of butt connectors for different gauges of wire. We have some crimp caps, and of course some solder if we actually solder wires together. Now we have an example here of some wire. We can connect these wires, for example, with a buck connector. Generally, you strip both ends. You put the buck connector, ensuring that there's no exposed wires there. And with a pair of crimpers, you put that in there and you crimp. A little crimp, it's a little dimple in the, in the actual connector. And it's a nice solid connection. And then you do the same on the other end, for example. You put that in there. And then you'd crimp, ensuring that there's no exposed wires on the end, giving you a nice solid connection. Now a lot of people argue that butt connectors aren't the best choice, and they do have some credibility to that, where essentially it's not wire to wire. You are relying on the metal inside the actual butt connector to connect the wires together. Because of that, if you have a poor connection within the butt connector, you'll essentially can have a short within the wire itself. As an alternative, these crimp caps are a little bit better, where essentially here you take your both wires together, you'll go ahead and twist them, and then you'll slip this just right over the top here, and with your same crimpers, go ahead and put a crimp in the wire. What that does is essentially crimps them together, the wires are twisted together, so it's metal on metal, and again, it's nice and solid. With that crimp, it's not coming apart. Now finally, the last alternative is actually using a soldering iron and some solder and heat shrink to connecting your wires together. Most would argue that that is the best style connection possible. Okay, so we've prepared our wiring harness by stripping both ends of wires. This is our harness adapter, and this is the harness that came with the radio. We stripped both ends. Now, because I'm gonna be soldering, I went ahead and put the heat shrink tubes just down here at the bottom. So as soon as the connection's been made, I can slip these up and over the connection and shrink them down so they're all sealed off nice and protected. So what we're gonna be doing is matching color for color. Now, generally, the way that you solder, and of course, there's a ton of videos on YouTube on how to solder, what you'll do is twist the wires together. Now, some people will also actually try to get each individual strand of wire and just go directly straight together. Other people like me just go ahead and twist that together. And what you're gonna do is use your solder here. Get it, make sure it's nice and hot. Essentially, what we have done here, just soldering them together, we had a really nice solid connection. We don't necessarily melt the solder onto the wider. What I like to do is put the soldering iron behind the wider to heat the wire up and let the solder itself melt into the wire. With that solid connection, what we'll do is bring our heat shrink up and over that connection. Just like so here. And then we'll use a heat gun to shrink the tube and that's a nice sealed off wire. That's a really good connection. It's not going anywhere. So we're gonna go ahead and do that with all the rest of our wires. Okay, so we went ahead and soldered everything up, just color for color. Fortunately for Pioneers, they're pretty standard. And this IDetalink Maestro wiring harness is also pretty standard as well. Now, of course, we added a couple of accessories like an amplifier turn on one to the blue white wire because we'll have an aftermarket amplifier. Um, but other than that, there's a couple of wires we didn't use and you may experience the same. At this point, we're gonna go ahead and move our heat shrink up and over our connections. Now for a professional look, once you've actually shrunk the tubes over your wire connections, you can use products like Tessa tape that allow you to wrap your harness in the same similar material found in Car wiring harnesses from the factory. Oh, 
Okay, so we finished taping up our wire. That's about it. Everything's nice and solid. This end plugs into our car. This end plugs into our radio. We have a couple other things hanging off the harness based on the accessories that we are choosing to retain. Now every car will differ depending on um, what parts you're installing, what radio you're installing, what features you're trying to retain. Um, other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Follow the instructions. Don't just assume that colors will match. Um, always double check the instructions that come with your harnesses. That's essentially how to wire a wiring harness for an aftermarket radio to a factory plug. If you have any questions on this, um, quick how to, just go and post a comment below. Thanks guys for watching the channel. Appreciate the support and we'll certainly see you in the next video.